Hi, this is Chris Hendren at OPT again. This is part two of our layer masking video for astrophotography. Part one was done through Maxim DL, and you can look at that. It's actually part five of a series on processing through Maxim DL. It actually showed how to look at auto calibration of files as well as aligning files shot at different image scales. What I'm actually going to do now is take those two layers into Photoshop and show you ways of combining the images in kind of a high dynamic range method. So we're going to open the images we would stacked in MaxMDL from part one. We have our long exposure image here and our short exposure image which looks a lot grayer because we've auto stretched it very heavily in MaxMDL. So to start with, we start with our long exposure, fairly typical process method. We're going to stretch this strongly here in curves and level it off here so we don't make our stars abnormally large. We go to levels, again very similar to my previous processing video for Photoshop. You don't want to clip it so you keep it here still to the left of the start of the histogram curve. We go to curves. Here you can actually see some of the gradient that was in the background. There are ways to process this out that will actually be covered under a future video. But for now, we just are interested in bringing the highlights and making sure we can blend those together. One more adjustment here to dim that background down a bit. And we're good for the purposes of this video. So if you look, we have detail and structure through most of this image. However, the trapezium is bright enough that it's completely saturated in white. There isn't any information here in this frame. That information is actually in the second frame here. So as noted, we've already strongly stretched this, meaning that the first thing we want to do rather than curves is actually adjust the levels. So we've done that first, do curves, Again, being careful here to not blow out the highlights here. The highlights are the whole reason why we shot these shorter exposures. So we wanna make sure that those show up in the final image. So here we have a pretty good range of brightnesses. We don't have to worry about the noise and the shadows because we're not even gonna be copying that information over. So we select and copy the short exposure image and paste it into the long exposure which as you can see lines up pretty well. So what we want to do here is just take the areas where the image is most detailed. This is really the only part of this we really care about. And again use your own judgment on this. You can just go for the central region if you want but I like to pick an area a little wider than the actual mask area. You'll see why in a little bit. If we select the inverse we feather it in this case, about 25 pixels is a good amount. So that adjusts the edge, but it blurs the boundary between the area inside and outside the selection. And if I hit edit and cut, what I've done here is essentially just cut out the central part of the mask while ignoring the area around, which I want to be from the longer exposure. So there are a couple ways to blend this in better. For one, you don't have to have 100% opacity on the mask. Often lowering the opacity a bit, maybe to around 60%, allows the more luminous bottom layer to shine through. Another thing you can do is adjust the curves of this layer to try to bring the shadows up while keeping from losing the brighter central parts. Lastly, what you wanna do is actually look at the eraser tool. This is the real secret to blending it. You wanna set a large eraser, maybe not quite that large. So in this case, about 80 pixels or so is a good amount. And you want to drop the opacity to around 20% or so. So you have to drop the hardness of the eraser all the way to zero. You want a soft edge. There we go. Again, we want a subtle blend between the two frames. 
We don't want to show any place where it quite obviously was a mix of a couple frames. So you want to make very subtle adjustments, try to concentrate on just the boundaries and only go multiple hits with it if you know that that area needs to be significantly brighter in your image. Once again, this part is very subjective. It's up to personal taste. So in this case, just keep making small adjustments as long as necessary. You can always check to look at the history tool to see what effect the mask has. Anything that looks artificial to your eye, work on blending. Again, as you get closer to a blend, you might want to raise the opacity up a little bit. This will help you actually keep more of the contrast for this fainter region that you worked hard to mask in with extra exposure time. Again, at this point, we're doing more art than science, so consider that when you're actually choosing when to stop with your blending. All right, now here's the one aspect we haven't covered yet, saturation. You're going to have some differences in saturation just because of the differences in exposure. So on the background layer, if you're going to tweak any sort of saturation, it can help to do that first so that you can see what you need to match up with with the top mask. The short exposures will have a lot less color information, so you may need to push the saturation quite a bit harder to get a lot of information to show up. Again, we're just trying to look for something that looks as natural as possible, so flipping the mask off allows you to see where the bright parts are and help you choose how to blend it in so that you're not losing any information in your final image. The other thing you can do, of course, is to do a little bit of tweaking in levels with the mid-tones. This can help blend just a little bit better with the layer below. If you're happy with the image, you can flatten it into a single layer. And at this point, if you make curves adjustments to it, it's going to behave as a single unified image. But what we've been able to do is take the brightest parts of the nebula and blend them in in such a way that it doesn't look artificial. This can be important when tackling images that have a huge dynamic range. Again, in the end, you are the person that needs to be happy with your image. So play around with this technique and decide which parts work best for you and which parts you would rather change. Let us know if you have any feedback or questions. Please let us know through our YouTube channel or you can contact me at chris at opticorp.com through email or give us a call here at the store. From all of us here at OPT, thanks for watching.